everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. I have just realized that it is mega crunch time to finish the Kirsten Summer Dress Cosplay project. Today is Sunday night, honestly probably too late to actually get any sewing done on this project, but I wanted to at least intro this video. And I am wearing this on Saturday morning, well no, I guess Saturday early afternoon. So yeah, that means that there's a Monday through Friday to get this done, except that I work Monday through Thursday, and I have something going on every single evening this week, except for Friday. So this is going to be intense. We are going to have to shove in sewing in like every little nook and cranny that I have. I'm probably going to be sewing at lunch this week, let's be really honest. And the scary thing is that I haven't even done a mock-up for this bodice yet. So I talked about the patterns for this in the last video, which I realized was like three weeks ago for you guys. Well, it was three weeks ago. No, it was more than three weeks ago for me as well. So yeah, it was a while ago. I feel totally out of the loop and I'm sure that you feel that way too. So that video will be down in the description below. If you want to know about like the patterns that I'm thinking about using for this project, those patterns are mentioned in the very beginning of that other video. But I am going to dive in with a mock-up first and hopefully that mock-up is going to work because we don't really have much time for trial and error here. So I'm going to get to cutting one out and then I think the next thing you're going to see is probably me trying on that mock-up. So just really quickly going into the mock-up, this is Butterick 5831 and these pink lines are the changes that I'm making. So on the back piece, I'm kind of bringing it in two sizes here, tapering it out half a size more here, and then totally bringing in the arm side because the shoulders are just way too wide on me. And I'm also squaring off the neckline in the back. In the front, I am squaring off the neckline again. And the back neckline I did lower just a little bit. This one I'm keeping it as is, at least for now. Again, narrowing the shoulders considerably and taking it in two sizes here, tapering it out about half a size more there, and then tapering in that arm size. So yeah, those are the changes I'm making. Let's see if that mock-up will work. Okay, I got distracted. I really wanted to be able to do the red boots, but I can't find them anywhere online and, you know, time's running out. So I decided I would take this super old pair of boots. These are the Darcy Comfort View or Comfort View Darcy boots, I think they're called. Um, these were my old ones where like the heel has come off. I don't remember if it's this one or the other one, but the heel has come off and been re-glued back on twice. Uh, but I decided let's try painting them to see if it would work. I am painting it with a mixture of just good old fashioned, old fashioned, acrylic paint and also a little bit of Angela's leather paint and cognac. My red Angela's leather paint is like almost empty so I knew it wouldn't make it. So that's why I'm mixing the two together to get the right shade. This is already like two-ish coats. I mean I did the second coat while the first coat wasn't really totally dry but yeah obviously it's gonna need like a lot of coats but I think that it will work. It's still reading I feel like a little bit orange but I think maybe it's just because the brown is showing underneath. But yeah, probably would just need more of the red acrylic. Anyway, I will do the rest of this later. I just wanted to do a test. The mock-up is on, and as you can see, there are definitely some fit issues. Not a ton, but too many. <laughs> so the biggest issue, honestly, is that it is too long. I am kind of surprised in this because I do generally have to lengthen patterns and I did not lengthen this. I guess I should say I do generally have to lengthen patterns in the front. I did not lengthen this, but it is too long. Particularly it's too long right here because this pattern actually like dips down, I guess, to allow for more blousiness. I have no idea. Saggy boobs? Who knows? but I need it to not dip down. The other thing is like, this is going into a waistband. So the band is gonna be like right here. So really, I mean, I do want a little blousiness, so that might be okay, but I definitely don't want the dip down parts. I'm gonna just like even that straight across. The back is just too long completely. Like even if I were to bring this up to where the waistband would sit, it is way too long. Like, I mean, look how long this is. My natural waist is here. So yeah, way too long. Definitely have to shorten the back, which kind of makes sense because again, I did not lengthen the front. 
I kept it as is. Normally I do not lengthen the back, but this pattern is clearly just really, really long. Now, the one other idea that I have for this, and I do not know if this will work, but honestly, the neckline is kind of where I want it already and I haven't taken the seam allowance out of it. So one idea that I kind of have is to take it up in the shoulders because it's also too big in the arms eye. Now we also do have the whole dart situation where I really need a dart going on, but I'm wondering if maybe taking it up in the shoulders will actually kind of help everything. The problem is that the shoulder seam is not a shoulder seam. It is one of those like slopey, back seams like you see a lot in this era of historical clothing. So I don't know if that will work, but I think I'm gonna try it. I think I'm gonna take probably like a half inch total, which I know is not very much. Maybe I'll do three quarters, but I'll take a little bit out of the shoulder seams, just see how much that might fix in everything. I think regardless, I am gonna have to take some back length out, but I'd rather not like have to redraft the arm's eye to fill stuff in there. I do think that I'm probably, maybe going to have to do a dart, but I do also think that although I do want wide shoulders, this might still be too wide. Like I kept trying with the paper pattern, I kept trying to hold it up and kind of put my finger on where I wanted the shoulder to go to. And I would come up with kind of a different thing every time. And then I widened it just a little bit from there because I was like, oh my gosh, that's impossibly narrow compared to this pattern. But it's because I have narrow shoulders and that's how it works. So I definitely have some tweaking to do there. I think the side of the neckline is nice. I haven't really checked the back, but yeah, I think the back of the neckline is pretty nice as well. So yeah, I do have some adjustments to make. Part of me almost wishes that there were more gathers, but then I know that it would be even more blousey in the bust and I didn't really want too much blousiness. So I think what we have, which is like a few inches extra over my bust measurement, I think that is probably fine. But yeah, a few tweaks to make. I'm gonna start by trying that shoulder seam adjustment and see what that does. All right, take two is looking much better here. Taking it up from the shoulders actually made a humongous difference and I took a lot out from the shoulders. So at the neckline, I took half an inch out from the shoulders and by the time I got down here, I took half an inch from the front, but I actually took an inch and a half out of the back, so two inches total, because the seam just wasn't angling as much as I wanted it to. And amazingly, that actually solved the dart problem. Like, yes, there's still a little bit of bagginess here, but that is just unavoidable when you have the shoulders this far off your shoulders. I did also decide not to take it up any further. I hope that's the right choice. I mean, I do still want the wide 1860s shoulders and this is what it would look like once the seam allowance is taken out. So I think that that's honestly not too bad there. I forgot to take up the back. So the back is still super long, but I have marked where it needs to go. And I did take out the weird saggy boob part down here um, and I made it just flat across. So what I've done here, I don't know if you can see them at all, but there are little pink marks starting with right here. I'm going to like taper out so that by the time it gets a side seam, I'm gonna raise the waistline up half an inch. By the time it gets to the back, honestly, I have no idea how high the marks are, but I think they're pretty high and the back's gonna come up a whole lot. But those are really the only other changes I need to make. I did drop the neckline down in the back because I took it up from the shoulders. I don't think it was very much that I took it out. I think it was like about three quarters of an inch or so. So not as much as where I took the shoulders up, but I think that that has helped. And I did wind up having to taper out a little bit of the back arm's eye because of that as well, just because they weren't like matching up once I redid that whole shoulder seam issue. So yeah, I think that at this point, once I take the length off the back, I can go ahead and take this apart and use it to cut out the stripey fabric. So one of the details on Kirsten's dress is that there is actually machine stitching on either side of the buttons. Now this side honestly is probably just because it's stitched down. I think that it 
it may actually have been built in two pieces you can see right here and then stitched closed but this side is going to be very functional because it is actually going to help the turned facing here to be stitched down and the Kirsten dress has white on the turquoise and that's cool because that's like exactly what's going to wind up happening here I think yeah I'm pretty sure that this is going to line up on the turquoise stripe like right on the edge right here and so I'm going to stitch that down on both sides via machine however I'm not going to go quite all the way to the bottom yet because when I put on the waistband I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to put that on with the facing fold open and that way I can fold that neatly and have that be a nice neat edge as well and incorporate that down into the skirt. Little update, the bodice is assembled. I actually wound up flatlining it with the mock-up fabric, which is actually sheets that Carolyn sent me. So thank you so much, Carolyn. They came in super handy, especially because I realized, I mean, I was going to line it with like muslin or sateen or something like that. Um, I don't have any. So the only actual like white lightweight fabric that I have are the sheets that Carolyn sent me. So yeah, that is what it is flatlined with. I did transfer the pattern markings, like my final fit. I transferred that to the paper because they were smaller than the paper. So that actually worked out really great. But now I have to go and, you know, finish the rest of this. So the next step is that I'm going to finish off the neckline just with some bias tape, I think. I don't think I'm going to make my own hopefully I have the right color you know like white to finish that off uh, that doesn't have any piping on it I am also going to make some piping because I don't think I have any that would be the right color I'm going to make some piping and put that in the arms eye then it will be time to test sleeves I also need to gather this up into the waistband so that is the other thing I'm going to do I thought I had already cut a waistband can't find it anywhere because that would have been like pre when I went on my vacation. So I'm going to have to cut a new waistband. The waistband does run horizontally, like the stripes are horizontal as opposed to everything else being vertical. So that will be a fun little contrast. And then the other thing that I did was I have red shoes now. So I painted the boots. I painted them, like I mentioned before, with that mixture of a little bit of Angelus leather paint and then otherwise just acrylic paint. I did seal them with the Angelus leather matte acrylic finisher. This one right here. I'm pretty sure I got that from American Duchess years ago when I was like painting one of their pairs of shoes, um, which by the way, just a little heads up. Um, American Duchess, if you like paint their shoes, then they blame the fact that you followed their tutorial to paint their shoes on the fact that the shoes will actually fall apart faster, or at least sometimes they do. So, um, just a little warning. I was not happy when they came back with that response of, oh, that's why your shoes are falling apart. It's total tangent, but my 18th century shoes fell apart after like two, three wears. Um, and yeah, they blamed it on the fact that I followed their tutorial for painting them. So... Yay. Uh, these are not leather shoes. These are pleather shoes that I'm doing right now, the boots, but I think they look pretty good. I have yet to put the laces in them because they're actually still kind of drying. The finisher is drying, but I did like two, in some places, three coats of the paint just to try to get the brown away. I'm sure I could have done some sort of a pre-coat. I didn't. And I think you can still see the brown a little bit, but again, close enough for the time I have. It is now Thursday afternoon. I am going to actually run to Joanne's here in a minute and try to find A, the buttons for the front of the dress because her buttons are actually oval. You see that? They are not round. I don't have any oval buttons. So I'm going to try to find those. If not, I'm just going to find like the appropriate size of round because honestly, I don't think I have ones that would like translate largely enough either. So that's one thing. Thing two that I have to find is I have strawberries <laughs> that I could put on the hat, but the hat has cherries. So I want to see if I can find cherries at Joanne's. Otherwise, my Kirsten hat is going to have strawberries on it. And also, uh, one of you, at least one of you, maybe two of you actually, suggested after my last video that it almost looks more like the dress is a gray tone dye as opposed to like a tea dye. To be honest, I'm not sure that I agree because I do think that the stripes on the dress are very much like cream colored, not gray colored. And I think it's probably that the turquoisey stripes kind of need to be gray toned 
and the other stripes are cream, which obviously I can't do anything about that. But I do still have my like tea dyed swatch. This is what it will look like tea dyed, which is definitely closer than this. I'm hoping that I have time to do this too. Uh, I mean, if I smell like tea at the picnic, I guess that's not a bad thing. But I am tempted to do a swatch with gray. I don't own any gray dye though, so I am also looking to get potentially some dye when I go to Joann's. So those are my three things that I'm in need of. Hopefully I don't need anything else, but I might actually do the piping first just to make sure that I don't need anything for the piping. And yeah, I have the rest of today and I have all of tomorrow and that is how much time I have. And I still don't have sleeves and the bodice isn't attached to the skirt and doesn't have buttons and I have a lot of work left. So I'm going to stop talking and go do some work. I'm back from Joann's and I have done my dye test right here. This was with gray dye. This was actually with tan dye that I picked up. And then this is the tea dyed one. The gray dye is obviously completely out. Like that's just totally wrong. Uh, but I'm honestly not positive. I was thinking full on tea dye and then I laid it out here. This is the undyed. I laid it out and now I'm wondering, is it actually the tan dye that's closer? It is really hard to tell. I feel like the one thing about the tea dyeing is that I do feel like the tea actually affected the turquoise stripes more than the tan dye did. Like I think this color, yes, is a little closer, but I like this more muted turquoise better since, you know, I forgot to make it inside out like I was originally going to that I mentioned in the first video. But yeah, I am not sure. That is close. I think I'm gonna go with the tea dyeing also because then it will smell good and I don't have much time left to really wash it out. So like this seems like probably the better option. I also bought some buttons. Now, as you can see, they are not exactly correct because they just did not have any oval buttons whatsoever. So these were kind of the closest that I could do. I think they'll be fine. I got 12 of them, which I think is excessive, but I think that will work. And I also found the cherries that I needed after searching the entire store. The 4th of July section actually came in with the win because I think that these three will be perfect as my cherries on my hat. And ta-da, there is the finished hat. I still have to take off a few glue strings, but I was trying to make sure that I really wasn't gluing to the hat because I do use this for other historical stuff. So I have the ribbon, the base ribbon, pinned to the hat underneath, and then everything else is glued to the ribbon. I did put down a tiny speck of glue there, 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 and there, just to like keep them in place, but that is it for glue. And this is what the neckline finishing looks like. I just used single fold bias tape and turned it over and then did a machine stitch because that is actually what is on Kirsten's as well. Though hers has a facing on the neckline, but even so, I just wanted to do the binding, but keep that machine stitch look. All right, so a couple of things. First off, you wanna make sure to cut the waistband one inch larger than your waist measurement or however big your overlap is because I have the one inch overlap there. And then also this is actually big enough that it has a one and a half inch facing on each side here. So it can just turn in and be its own facing. So in other words, yes, the waistband is all attached now. I don't remember if I talked about the scale of this in the last video, but basically I took the scale measurement based on the skirt length and this was meant to be two inches wide. In other words, it needs to be cut three inches wide. And I have also flatlined that with the same cotton sheets. Now what I'm doing is I am putting a little facing on kind of the like fly opening, if you will, of the skirt before I attach the skirt to the waistband. So I've cut this piece it wound up being like 10 inches long. This is just a little extra here. But basically I had drawn a pink line that is going to be the sort of V that overlaps with the other side of the skirt. And I'm going to wind up stitching this so that it's like half inch seam allowance here and then onto the pink line there. And that should give me that V shaped overlap for the facing, I hope. So I'm about to test that and see if that's true. It worked. 
I know it's a really weird little detail, but I wanted to get this little crossover bit working. So it is a little bit odd that like you can see the turquoise stripe from the inside a little. Maybe it's not coming off on camera, but yeah, this is what I wanted. So basically what I'm going to do to mimic the one on here, because this obviously is sewn shut, you see stitching on both sides of this little facing right here and what I want to do is I am going to like stitch this side while it's open all the way from here I'll do the bodice once it's joined but from here and down to here and then right here on this like lower quadrant right here in other words just about there-ish I am actually going to stitch it through to this side of the fabric as well. And that way this little flap will always stay that way. I have no idea if this is like how actual flies are done, but this appears to be how Kirsten's is done. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then it will also get stitched up this side, which is where the other side of the facing goes to. So I'm going to stitch that all down and then the skirt can get attached to the bodice. So as you can see, the skirt is now attached to the bodice and I am noticing two things. The first one is that this dress is like really, really freaking cute. And part of me is a little bit sad about the idea of like tea dyeing it or using the tan dye or anything like that because it is just really cute as is. It feels like very dapper day. And yes, I don't have the sleeves on it and they will be wide set shoulders with piping and stuff like that, but it just feels very dapper day. The other thing that I've noticed is the one thing that actually needs to be changed, which is although I think the poofy in the front is the right amount of poofy, like for this era, basically, the poofy in the back is too much. So I just need to take up the back a little bit. Like it's already curved up, so it feels weird to take it up even more. But I think looking, I'm looking literally in the, the window right now as a mirror. And I think, oh, I think it's just like a little bit too long. I might think on it just a bit because I can take up the back at any time. Like it doesn't have anything to do with buttons or buttonholes or sleeves or, you know, any of the rest of the next steps of this dress. I could take up the back like a month from now if I wanted to, you know, it's totally fine. The rest of it though, again, it looks so cute and I'm really, really loving it. And I like, can't wait to wear this all as an outfit. I do think for Kirsten, it does need the tea dyeing. It needs to be toned down because otherwise it's going to look like a 50s dress or at least, I don't know, maybe the sleeves will tone it down in and of themselves. But speaking of sleeves, that is now the next step. I am going to make piping and I'm going to pipe the arm's eye. And part of me is tempted to do a sleeve mock-up first, to be honest before I do the piping because otherwise you have to contend with the piping when you're doing your mock-up like it gets in the way so hmm maybe I, okay I'm gonna do the mock-up first then I will do the piping when I actually go to put the sleeves in but yeah this whole thing is so cute like I wish you could see the pin tucks and everything right now obviously you will at the end of this video you'll see the full look but it is just it's like really really cute oh also I did want to give a quick note about buttons and buttonholes I am going to wait to do both the buttons and the buttonholes until after I dye it, which is a little bit nerve wracking for me. I mean, like tonight is Thursday night. I don't work tomorrow, so I can kind of go to sleep like as late as I need to because I really, really want to get the sleeves in. And ideally I want to get it dyed tonight because that way it can dry overnight and I can do buttons and buttonholes in the morning. Obviously, if I'm not able to dye it until tomorrow, I have to allow it dry time. And I don't tend to put really like any dresses, modern or whatever, like no blouses, no dresses, none of those go in the dryer. They hang dry. So we're talking like at least eight to 10 hours probably of dry time, maybe a little less if I stick a fan on it. But yeah, I really want to get these sleeves done so I hope that I can get them right on the first go. I know that's probably like jinxing me completely but let's go ahead and put together a sleeve mock-up so that I can get everything done and do buttons and buttonholes tomorrow. So I was really hoping that this mock-up, first mock-up, would be perfect even though I completely drafted this sleeve by myself because I am definitely fading. It is now 12.30 and I have lately been going to bed a little bit earlier than that and not sewing this late. 
And unfortunately, the sleeve is not working at all. So yeah, I mean, I think that I can get there from here without too many more tweaks. And because of that, I am going to try at least one more thing to get this to work but basically we're looking at a few issues here for one it is way too big like we're talking minimum two if not three inches too big around at the bottom also honestly I think there's too much poof at the top which I'm kind of surprised about because I didn't think that was going to be the result there is also some sort of weird thing happening do you see how there's like this fold like it's definitely pulling weirdly and I don't know that just taking out the excess is going to do anything with that I don't know if it's like a rotation that needs to happen or what and then also it's a lot shorter up here than it is here good news is I think I like this length I think this length is maybe a little on the long side I have to double check how it is like against her actual sleeve but I do feel like the shorter length is more appropriate. So it's a lot of tweaks. My kind of initial idea that I think I wanna try is literally to like undo where the gathers are right here, where there's a significant amount of the poofs and probably take out part of the excess. Like if I just take out like two inches straight down the middle and remove that fabric, I'm kind of wondering if that will work because it'll make it fit at the bottom. It'll make the top less poofy. Obviously, it's not going to do anything to the length, and I don't think it's going to fix this weird twisty bit. So the twisty bit is what's really throwing me for a loop. So I think I'm going to study this in the mirror for a minute or so, see if maybe my initial idea will work, and hopefully do a second mock-up. I think we are a lot closer this time. Taking that like two inches out right here really does help almost everything. I think the main thing that is still happening is we are still definitely getting wrinkles right here. So I think what needs to happen, I cut this so that it was like even on both sides because my brain doesn't really compute how a sleeve works otherwise. Like I know it once I put it on and realize that there's wrinkles and I need to change something, but to actually pattern it, my brain doesn't compute where things go. So yeah, I think what needs to happen is I just need to curve this front bit a little deeper and that way it'll get rid of some of that excess fabric there. I could probably also take this in a little more, but I'm a little bit torn about that because I'm kind of liking the level of poof at this point. So I don't know, and then it definitely does need to be shorter. Some of that is going to come out just from seam allowance for the piping, but I think it needs to be a little bit shorter still, maybe more like that length, that looks a little better. So yeah, that is like at least one inch that I've just folded up, and seam allowance of course would be the half inch with piping honestly sometimes it's like three eighths of an inch so I definitely need to take some length out there too but we're really really close so I think I'm just gonna kind of like tweak this a little bit up cut off a little excess and try it on again see how it looks and see if hopefully it'll work and I can cut out the actual sleeves and you know sew them on and go to bed I think that is a success so I pulled it up like I think an inch maybe even a little bit more right here. So I'm sure that the shape of the sleeve looks really, really weird. It will show you what the final shape looks like, but I had already had a gusset in the sleeve, meaning like the edges curve out like that. And now I've got this weird thing going on. So yeah, I'm sure that the sleeve looks very, very strange, but this is the winning thing. So I'm gonna cut off like the excess fabric that is in there right now. And I had already cut off the excess up here, which brought this to be a little more even down there. And then of course I had that two inch taken out of the center of the sleeve. So yeah, this pattern is gonna be very, very strange. I am going to transfer it onto the striped fabric. That said, I am not going to get to the point of dying tonight because that would mean making piping, putting on the piping, cutting out the sleeves, putting on the sleeves, and putting on more piping. And uh, yeah, again, it's like, uh, it's one o'clock in the morning at this point. So I am have 10 minutes left in the show that I'm watching. I'm gonna do as much as I can in that 10 minutes and then I'm gonna call it for tonight. 
guess it's not quite as strange of a shape as I thought. It just is very like long. But yeah, this is the front that I cut away. And then this was what it originally looked like on both sides. So this is my sleeve shape. Well, my piping job is not particularly nice. Like this piping was being really wibbly with me. I think you can see all of the little wrinkles right there. But as you can see, these sleeves are on. So that means it is time for her to get into a nice big vat of tea, which I do in my garage sink. And hopefully she'll be a little toned down shortly. As you can see, my tea is steeping. I have poured a kettle of boiling water in there as well, and then this is just really, really hot water coming out of the tap. I've got four tea bags in there, just English breakfast, plain black tea, and I'm going to wet this first before I put it in, take the tea bags out, and dye my dress. So I know this is really poor lighting, so you probably can't see much anyway, but I'm a little bit concerned because this has been in there for like probably five minutes at this point, and I don't feel like we're getting any color difference. Again, it's hard to see in here because of the lighting, but I just feel like this is still very, very bright. And my samples took their dye from the tea nearly instantly, like they were in there for, I don't know, a minute. And I don't know if it's that I didn't have like enough steeped tea in here or like for the quantity of dress, it just, you know, wasn't enough or if I need to leave this in for a lot more time or what. But yeah, I mean, like we see the color here. This is all very much tea colored and this is hot water. Um, but I just don't feel like it's getting color. So part of me is tempted to put a little bit of the tan dye in here. Obviously take the dress out, mix the dye in, put the dress back in. But I also don't know if that would react weirdly with like whatever acids or whatever might be in tea. I'm not really sure. So yeah, we'll see because I don't want this to have to sit in here all day since I obviously need to dry it and get it out and I just don't feel like we're getting really any reaction whatsoever. I just want to point out something interesting. I have added a little bit of the tan dye to the lot and I can tell now that it is taking on a little bit of color but what's interesting is that whereas the tea was really not affecting anything, the cotton lining or the outer which is I believe a cotton blend, the dye is definitely affecting the cotton lining. I don't think it's coming off as tan on the camera as it is in real life but it's definitely affecting this more than it is this which is quite interesting so I'm gonna give this like another minute or so and then pull it out and I think we will be good you know it's funny when you're staring at something for like a long time and you're staring at two versions of the something thinking that they're identical and then suddenly you realize that they're not actually identical at all so that's what just happened. I think you've seen how I have had one dress on a doll and one dress that has been like on a hanger that I've just been holding up, bringing with me, etc. This dress I actually just got recently in a new lot that I bought for Kirsten, a different Kirsten that I'm going to be reselling. And I was trying to decide which version of the dress to keep. And I'd kind of decided to keep this version right here just because I think this one's dated 1992 and it has like separate Velcros in the back. This one I believe is dated 95. I usually like to keep the older thing. And then it wasn't until I literally just put this one on Kirsten to get her ready for tomorrow because I don't like to bring white body dolls out of the house. She is a tan body doll so like she's really not worth much. So yeah it wasn't until then that I realized that the buttons are totally different. I mean they're both still oval shaped but I think you can tell even by the reflectivity of these like these are super shiny and these are not and also these are smaller than these ones right here and these are the ones that have those kind Kind of cool like concentric circles going on there whereas like these ones don't really have that detail so I just thought that was interesting as I get ready to start putting buttons on my dress here that I had not realized that they were different editing Rebecca here. So right now in this video is where you would have seen the footage that I turned into the buttonhole tutorial that already came out as another video. So I will link that video down below in the description if you want to go check that out. But just know that this is where I did buttonholes and sewed on buttons and stuff. And now we will get on with the rest of Kirsten. It's done! So the next time that you see me will be tomorrow when I am fully done up like Kirsten. So just as a little heads up, I am about to head out the door to the picnic, but that said, it's raining. So I'm not 100% certain 
how much footage I will actually be able to get because I don't want to get my camera wet. And the entire like photo shoot that I'd planned to do beforehand with all of the reveal and stuff like that, uh, that's obviously not going to happen if it's raining. So in that case, I will wind up tomorrow going to another park and taking all of the finished stuff there. So you will get finished shots in a moment here no matter what, but I was also going to like vlog today <laughs> for a whole separate video. That might not happen. So we'll see what happens today. So it turns out this paint job does not work and you really need to use like real shoe paint because this was me walking on wet grass for about a hundred yards. <laughs> how this outfit came out. I think that it looks quite like Kirsten's dress. I am going to have to make another attempt at the boots for the next time that I wear this because that red did not stick whatsoever. But the sun, well, the sun didn't wind up coming out, but the rain stopped. So we were able to have our picnic and it was a wonderful, wonderful time seeing everyone else in all of their American Girl finery. I will insert a picture right here. But yeah, overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I always just love cosplaying Kirsten. I think it's so, so much fun. And now I am actually off to another event. So I have to get out of this, which is why I'm doing this outro right here, even at the picnic because I am off to a Regency ball. But overall, I'm very happy with how this outfit turned out and I can't wait to wear this again and I can't wait to have another picnic again. So do watch this space as in this channel, etc. because I will be announcing another picnic soon if you are in like the Seattle area and you're interested in attending an American Girl cosplay picnic. So yep, that's going to be it for me on this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes other content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons Sharon, Mirage, Laura, Jean, and Janelle. Thank you all so so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing! <laughs>